Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, Developer Advocate at Dremio. I wanted to do today is talk a little bit about data virtualization and just kind of explain what it is and kind of show you ways or basically challenges with data virtualization and how to overcome those challenges. But before I go there, um, I want to mention that next week is the Subsurface Conference uh, here at Dremio. So again, that's going to be uh, virtual and at live at locations like San Francisco, New York, and London. So head over to dremio.com slash subsurface to register for the subsurface conference. And if you're watching this after the subsurface conference this year, don't worry, we'll be doing another one next year. So register for that one as well and make sure to catch all of our content, especially our weekly program, Gnarly Data Waves, uh, which is every Tuesday or anytime you want on your favorite podcast application. But with that, let's get to our topic today of data virtualization. So let's just kind of paint a story. So basically, you might be a company and you have lots of different departments that are using data in different ways. So maybe, you know, one department has data in Postgres, another department has data in uh, MySQL or yeah, MySQL. And what happens is that you want to run analytics on that data. And some of, a lot of that data may need to be joined and may need to be uh, referred, referring to each other and so forth. So what's the, sort of the traditional way we would do this nowadays? Okay, well, what would happen is that, you know, we would get a data lake. So that might, you might land that data in S3. So then you'd have like an ETL pipeline that would take all that data from Postgres and all that data from uh, MySQL and then land it in, let's say, Parquet files in S3. And then maybe, you, you know, to, to then run analytics on that data, uh, you might have data from either from those sources or other sources that you might be landing in a data warehouse like Snowflake. Okay, so one a couple things here depending on the scale of of your you know data needs this may seem be more complicated to set up than you really need you may just want your data to kind of just live in postgres and mysql and not necessarily have to one first copy it to a data lake and then copy a subset of that data to um to a, a data warehouse okay so you're making you're duplicating your storage costs you're running a bunch of compute not to run analytics but to do the etl work okay so there's all sorts of costs and, and again Sometimes that is warranted depending on the use case, but sometimes it is not, okay? You know, you may be at a stage where it would make more sense for you to work directly off of um, Postgres and MySQL, okay? So then what happens there is you would want a engine that can connect or federate your sources, okay? And that's something that Dremio can do, okay? So if we bring Dremio into the mix, oh, we don't want to make another line, okay? We, let's go over here. We, if we bring Dremio into the mix, well, then what happens is that the dynamic kind of changes. Instead of, you know, having to move all the data from your Postgres to, to uh, uh, S3, you can just connect it to Dremio. And your MySQL database, you can just connect it to Dremio. Okay. We'll come back to S3 and Snowflake in a moment. We, we do have a story there. But now what can happen is that I can query that data directly from where it is from one place so basically it gives you this interface that makes it seem like all these different data sources are really just one data source. So that's what data virtualization really is. It's just kind of making your data in different places feel like it's data in one place. Okay, so you now can log into Dremio and run joins against your Postgres, against your SQL data. Okay, maybe you have some other internal data that you hold in S3. So now, oh, okay, so we can connect that to Dremio as well and again, join all that data together. Okay. And maybe there's another department uh, that does have a need for a data warehouse and does have data in Snowflake that you're going to want to have access to as well. Well, guess what? Dremio, you can connect your Snowflake to. Okay? And who knows? You may, there may be another department that already uses Dremio. Okay? And basically, they want to give you access to their data. Well, guess what? Okay? You can connect their Dremio account to your Dremio account with the new Dremio, the Dremio connector, okay? So that way, you, again, you can see all the data. Uh, and again, that's really cool, especially if you're implementing like a data mesh where maybe different departments are gonna just each wanna have sort of their own Dremio setup. But bottom line is like, now you have all these different data sources, you can join them. Now this then raises a question because there are other tools that will um, allow you to do data virtualization. But again, one of the, the issues you can run into is the bottleneck of the underlying source, okay? Basically, if I am joining a data set from Postgres and MySQL, but the particular data I'm joining is so huge and what I'm not exactly doing, a lot of that query is going to get pushed down, or essentially instead of, it's going to happen on Postgres, it's going to happen on MySQL. 
and it's going to depend on the speed of those tools, which will depend on sort of like, hey, what is your setup? Okay. And that can, again, act as a bottleneck. Well, Dremio has a really clever way of getting around this is through its really, really unique feature called data reflections. So let's say I have a data set here, okay, basically that joins data. Okay, that joins data from my Postgres source and the MySQL source, okay? Uh, this is a view of that data, okay? So it's not really a new table, it's just a logical view of the data from both sources joined together, okay? What you can do is just by flipping a switch, you can turn on what's called a data reflection. Okay, let's use another shape, but we'll just use this, We'll call and we'll call it a data reflection. Okay? So now what does that do and how does that benefit me? Well, what's going to happen is it's going to take that join, okay, which again, without the data reflection, you are partially affected by whatever the underlying, because you have to query that source each time. You have to query the Postgres uh, database, you have to query the MySQL database. You turn on data reflections, it then creates a materialization. So it basically uh, creates a, basically what it does under the hood, it creates an iceberg table uh, using par with Parquet files uh, that it can then use instead and it'll actually one it won't create another namespace because if you ever use the materialized tables in a database you know they're very useful for speeding up your queries but the user has to know oh you created like materialized table a and they got a query materialized table a you don't have to worry about that they just query the tables they're used to querying they're going to get the benefit of the data reflection two it's going to auto refresh so it's going to make sure it keeps the data in sync so as the data changes in postgres and mysql the data reflection will stay in sync you don't have to think about it and three the cool thing is, if you make other views based on the same data from these, uh, from Postgres and MySQL, again, or you create other views that are even derived from this view, they can use that same reflection. So that reflection can then be reused, not on just that view, but on other views, giving you the best bang for your buck for those materializations. So then you're going to get, so you're going to get that virtualization and you're going to get that performance when you're using Dremio and its data reflections feature. Okay. And again, that can work with any data you're, 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 you're connecting to. So whether you're connecting to Postgres, MySQL, S3, Snowflake, or to another Dremio cluster, or to many of the other sources that Dremio connects to, you're going to get that nice performance bang for your buck. You're going to get that virtualization where you can have all your data in one place. But on top of that, you also get the semantic layer with Dremio. Okay, so now, not only is all your data in one place, but you're going to be able to control who accesses it, not just based on like the individual user, but you can uh, control access by different groups based on the type of access they get, like whether they can write to a particular data set or a particular folder. You can even control what they see in particular columns and rows with row and column access rules. So you get really granular access that's actually pretty easy to use. And you also get a wiki so you can document the data. So all the views you create on all these disparate data sets, you can then document all from one place. You're gonna get the benefit of that data virtualization, having all your data from many places feel as if it's in one place, but you're getting that additional benefit of governance. You're getting that additional benefit of documentation. So that way you can have a really easy interface to your data world uh, from wherever that data lives. And that's sort of the cool thing about uh, data, when you're doing data virtualization with Dremio. One of the many things you can do with Dremio. So if you're just trying to build a data lake house, or you're trying to do data virtualization, you're trying to build a data mesh, trying to modernize your on-premise uh, there's a solution that Dremio can provide you. So hopefully you find this interesting. I'll be trying to do other videos like this, kind of showing you sort of how these different types of uh, setups can be set up and kind of how to think through them. But again, make sure you register for the Subsurface Live Conference. I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.